so with both the heads bolted down and all the head studs torqued properly, it's now time to move on to the valve train assembly and uh, rockers. So as you see here, I've kind of already gone through the uh, passenger side bank of the engine. We'll go ahead and go through uh, the driver's side now. So the first thing I like to do is uh, drop my push rods in here. So if you remember, we measured our push rod length in a previous video. So these are our Trick Flow 6.350 uh, push rods, and they're all solid one piece. So they're not going to fall apart on us up at 6,500 RPM. And uh, even if you're running a stock engine, when you run these aftermarket heads like this, and they have guide plates like uh, this AFR head, and we're going to get to that in a bit here, but if they have guide plates, you need to have hardened push rods. So the stock push rods just aren't going to cut it. So anyway, that being said, we're going to go ahead and uh, drop these push rods down in, and they're going to go and uh, seat down in the uh, lifter cup down there. So you just want to make sure you got a good view here into the center of your engine where you can make sure that they're uh, landing where they're supposed to, so that's not all too difficult. Now we're going to go ahead and um, take our guide plates and we're going to get these set in here. Kind of awkward, it's got the engine angled so uh, it shows up on the camera. But So first of all, these studs, I went ahead and put some of our engine assembly lube on the threads so that we get good and proper torque. So that's real important. So I'm going to go ahead and get these all in. Not necessarily snug, we still want these guide plates to move at this point in time. So uh, just in a little of the ways, but so these guide plates can still move around. So I'm going to go ahead and get the rest of these in and we'll move on from there. Alright, so now, remember I said to get these all in, but don't snug them up or anything. Get them close, but not even where they're snug and these guide plates are, can still float around. Um, also, one thing to keep in mind with these guide plates is some guide plates, like these AFRs in particular, are uh, side bias. So, they tell you right and left, and uh, usually you want the lettering facing up towards you. So, in the case of these AFR guide plates that come with these AFR heads, um, that's what you want to see. So we want the most um, of our roller here contacting the valve stem as possible. Uh, if I were to go and just tighten these down, um, these guide plates could be set where this push rod is, you know, leading my rocker arm over where I'm only getting about half of uh, my roller tip contact. Let's see if we can get this at a better angle here where we can see it on the camera. But um, so anyway, what I'm going to go ahead and do is we're going to put our rockers on, rockers on and center them up so we know we're getting some good linear geometry. So get them good and centered. And then we're going to pull them off. So once you get to where you want it, snug it up really quick with your fingers. This is also advanced to having your uh, threads oiled up here so that they easily turn. And now we're going to go ahead and torque them down now that we have them where we want them. And these torque down to 50 to 55 foot-pounds. So in my case, I just set it to 53 foot-pounds. So clicking in here. All right, so we know we're going to our torque spec for these. And then we're going to go ahead and check this one more time. And now that it's torqued down, see they can only float so far within that guide plate. And see how we're good and lined up with the valve stem. That's what you want. The most of this roller possible contacting that valve stem. So now that we see that this is good, uh, we're going to go ahead and take our assembly lube here and 
just put a dab on our valve stem and put a dab on our spring cup. Later on, before we go to fire the engine, we'll squirt a little oil in our, our uh, central roller here. But for now, I'm going to go ahead and get these oiled up good. And you can. Um, I might as well go ahead, and I did it on those other rockers, squirt a little oil in that uh, on either side of this roller fulcrum. So anyway, we'll get those all oiled up, and then um, from here on, we're good to go, and uh, we'll go through the rest of these, and once we get all these on, done in the same fashion, where we have our uh, stem lined up with our roller, get, Know, like the way it's supposed to be, then we'll go ahead and we're going to go ahead and set our valves. So um, bear with me while I go ahead and go through the rest of these. Okay, so we got all of our Scorpion rockers on here, and we got a good aerial view coming down on the engine where we can see the lifter valley here. Now, um, we're going to go ahead and adjust our valves beforehand and set our lifter preload is what we're really doing here. So I've done this numerous times on quite a few engines over the years, and this method always works. I never have any clacking lifters. So uh, there's a few methods that people use. There's some methods where when a certain cylinder is wherever place, you adjust this, that, and whatever lifter. I don't like that method myself, so uh, um, I go about it a bit differently. Uh, it takes more time, but you know it's right. So what I like to do is I'm going to rotate the engine over, and uh, when one lifter of a cylinder is at its full lifted dwell, then uh, I'm going to go ahead and adjust the opposing lifter because we know that that um, lifter is on the base circle of the cam lobe, and the base circle is obviously the back side of the uh, lift lobe, and that's when we can adjust our valve. Uh, when we determined our push rod length, that's what we used, so naturally we're going to use that again. And um, so anyway, uh, a good one you can see from the camera here is probably this one right here. So, uh, what cylinder are we dealing with? Uh, cylinder two. So, we're going to go ahead and turn the engine around. Notice I have um, all my rock, rocker studs on here, and uh, they're not tied all. They're two or three threads in, just so they're sitting there. And I've removed all the set screws. Now, I've done this so that when I'm setting it, I don't accidentally think it's on the set screw and make a bad adjustment. I've been with people and have watched them make that mistake, so we're not going to make that mistake today. So we're going to go ahead and rotate the engine over here. And uh, um, you're going to want to hold your fingers on the lifters because of the oil that, or the assembly lubricant we've used. Once these lifters lift up, they could get stopped or they're not going to just naturally float back down to the cam lobe because we don't have any uh, spring tension on them yet. So we'll do this second cylinder since we can see it real well. So uh, now our exhaust is coming up and when it stops coming up, all right, it's, it has stopped coming up and so it's at its full lifted dwell. And our intake rocker then on cylinder two is on its, uh, the base circle of the cam. Now, we can come down in here like such. And notice I didn't put any um, assembly lubricant on the top of this fulcrum because it'll distort your feel. So a lot of people like to bump their lifter around, or I mean their uh, push rod here. But um, there's numerous ways you can do it. You can spin it, and then when it gets tension, but really, um, with these locking, uh, rocker nuts here, you can, they turn so freely without the lock that you can literally come down until they stop. 
but a, a good check here is move your um, push rod up and down and spin it. Once you feel a little bit of drag, you know where you're supposed to be. Now, from this point, we want to put about 20 thousandths preload on this uh, on this lifter here. So once we've reached our point, we're going to go ahead and um, rotate this. So this flat part here will be 180 um, below. So it's a half turn is 20 thousandths preload for this specific thread pitch. So we're going to go ahead and make our half turn. Now this is proper preload. And then now we can go ahead and I want to do our little Allen key locks here. We're going to go ahead and lock this in and this one will be finished. So we do this by simply setting our wrench on here. We're going to run this down to the top of our stud. And then we're going to hold our rocker nut so it's not going anywhere and put just a good little twist on our, uh, our locking set screw. And once your, once your Allen wrench here starts to bend, you know you're good and tight. You don't need to go any farther than that. And it's locked in. It's not going to go anywhere. It'll stay like that. I run solid lifters like that. And it's, it's completely locked in. So uh, anyway, we're going to go ahead and I'm going to move through the entire engine in this manner. And it takes a bit of time, but when you're done, you know it's right and you have confidence when you uh, light the key off, when you first drop it in your engine, that you're not going to hear any lifter clatter and then you can run your engine in without worry. So anyway, we're going to go ahead and do the rest of these and then we should be good to go.